Welcome to Virtual Wisdom Finance and Accounting Tutorials. My name is Peter and I'll be your guide in this particular tutorial. In this tutorial, I want us to look at cost of capital. Cost of capital is a topic in finance and specifically in financial management or in business finance. Cost of capital or what we call the cost of finance is the price a company pays to obtain and retain finance for its operations. So for example, if you obtain, if you want to obtain capital uh, by borrowing funds from a financial institution, the cost of the loan, which is the interest on that loan, is a, is a, is a cost on that particular capital. If you are issuing new shares, the cost of allotting those shares, for example, advertisement cost, the cost of printing new uh, prospectors and all that, all that cost is what you're calling the cost of capital. Now, we have uh, various methods or models that are used to compute the cost of capital. And these methods include one, we have dividend yield or what we call the Gordon's model. We have the risk adjusted discounting rates and we have market model or the investors expected yield. And the fourth one here, we have capital asset pricing model or what you're calling CAPIM. Now, in this particular tutorial, I'm going to focus on the first model, which is the dividend yield, or what we call the Gordon's model. Now, this model is used to determine the cost of various capital components. In particular, it is used to determine the cost of equity, represented by KE, the cost of perpetual preferential capital, KP, and the cost of debentures, KD. The cost of equity here is also the cost of on the ordinary shares. The shares, the ordinary shares issued cost on the ordinary shares is uh, what we're referring to as the cost of equity. Now, to get the cost of equity, we normally take D naught divided by P naught. That is, if there is no growth in dividends. Dividends is the shareholders' earnings. When a company makes a profit in a given period or in a given year, some of the profit is distributed to the shareholders and profit to shareholders is distributed in form of dividends. So dividends is basically the shareholders earnings. So if there is growth in the dividends that are issued per share, then this is the, if there is no growth, this is the formula that you use that KE is given by D naught divided by P naught. Then if there is constant growth, that is dividends are growing at a particular rate, then you use this formula here that KE is given by D naught into one plus G divided by P naught. So this one, you get the value there and then you add G, you add G, where the KE here is the cost of equity then we have d naught which is the dividend per share that is what is the dividend the value of dividend for every single share for example if you earn 10000 shillings in dividends and you have 10000 shares so the dps would be 1 shilling 1 shilling per per share that is the dps dividend per every share then we have p naught which is the current market price per share or what we call the mps how much are those shares selling in the market currently if you are to sell them remember shares will gain or lose value for example you can buy shares in a company at five shillings after five years the shares will have maybe gained value to 10 shillings there is a premium of five shillings so the new value which is 10 shillings that is the value that you can sell the shares to the market at that given particular time and that is what you are calling the mps the market price per share and then the g here is a growth rate the growth in dividends the other cost of capital component is the cost of perpetual preference shares given by dp divided by pp where kp here is the cost of preferential capital then we have dp the dividend the preference dividend per share Remember here, we have the dividend per, per share, that is per ordinary share. Then here we have dividend per preference share. Then we have the PP, which is the market price per preference share. How much are they selling in the market currently? It's good to understand the difference between the ordinary shares and preference shares. Preference shares or preference shareholders have preferential rights in that when dividends are being paid, the preference shareholders are paid first and then the, the ordinary shareholders are paid later those preferential rights is what makes 
the preference makes them be get uh, being called the preference shares then we have the cost of debt kd which is given by interest into one minus t divided by vd this is when there is no definite maturity period if you for example borrow from the general public a company will borrow from the general public using what we call debentures you want to borrow a hundred thousand what you're going to do you're going to issue a debenture certificate to the general public and then they are going to give you money in return. The money that you're going to be given, that is the 100,000 that you want, then they are going to retain the certificate. Now, in this certificate, you'll be paying them an interest for a given duration and then after the duration has expired, you return the money back. That is the 100,000. Now, what we are saying here, if there is no period there is no number of years mentioned in that particular case. Eh? This is the formula that you use. But if there is a definite maturity period, for example, you say if you the debenture period, uh, the, the, the debenture is valid for three years. It means after three years, you'll have to pay back that money. So the three years is the maturity period for that debenture. And if maturity period is given, then you have to use this formula here that KD is given by interest into 1 minus T. You close that plus m minus vd close that into 1 over n then m plus vd 1 over 2 remember here we are multiplying by 1 over n we are multiplying by a half so in this case eh, the kd here kd is uh, standing for the cost of debt then we have t which is the corporate tax rate then we have vd which is the market value of the debenture the market value just like we have the, the the market value are uh, the mps for ordinary shares market price per share that is the same way we have the market value of the debenture the, what is the value of that loan in the market currently then we have interest here we have interest charges per annum then we have the maturity value or what you call the par value and the maturity value for example in the example that i've given you have borrowed a hundred thousand in three years time after paying the interest for the three years you'll be required to pay back the 100,000. So that 100,000 is the maturity value or the par value on that debenture. Then the duration, how long is it going to take for you to pay back the maturity value? If there is a, there is a, there is a maturity period given, the maturity period, for example, 100,000 payable in three years, that is a three-year debenture, then N will be the maturity, uh, the maturity duration in years. After getting the various cost of capital components, you need now to combine them to get what we call the weighted average cost of capital or work. So work is the overall or composite cost of capital. It's a combination of the various cost of capital components. You need to bring together the cost of equity, the cost of debt, the cost of perpetual preference shares. When you bring all of them together to get a single value, a single figure, that single figure is what we are calling the work or the weighted average cost of capital and this is how you get the weighted average cost of capital that work is given by cost of equity into e over v plus cost of uh, perpetual preference shares into p over v plus kd into one minus t then into d over v now what does they represent of course we have ke which is the percentage cost of equity we have kp which is the percentage cost of preference share capital and we have kd which is the percentage cost of debt then the E here represents the market value of equity. Then P is the market value of preference share capital. And we have D, which is the market value of debt. And how do you get the market value? The market value of any of the capital components is given by the market price of the security multiplied by the number of securities. We are going to see how you get these later. Then when you combine it, e plus p plus d when you combine these three here you're going to get what we call the total value of the farm and the total value of the farm is represented by v let's look at an illustration maybe it's going to help us understand the concept better so you're told that the following is the capital structure of xyz limited as at 31st december 2002 so you're given the capital structure of this company here you're told that ordinary share capital shillings 10 per value so you're told here you're given the values in millions so they issued shares they issued ordinary shares and each ordinary share was selling at shillings 10 
Therefore, after selling the shares, a certain number of shares, they raised a total of 400 million. So with this, we can be able to know how many shares did they sell. To know the number of shares that they sold, you just need to divide this by by 10 so that if you divide this by 10 you'll be able to get what 40 million as the number of shares that they sold then 10 percent preference share capital shillings 20 per value so they also sold preference shares at an interest rate of 10 percent and these preference shares were sold at 20 shillings each and they were able to raise 100 million then debentures at 100 per value a total of 200 million was raised so the total money uh, that they raised from uh, the various capital sources or from the various sources of capital they raised 700 million additional information corporate tax rate is 30 percent so we have the tax there then preference shares were issued 10 years ago and are still selling at per value MPS equals to per value. What does that mean? That the preference shares here that we issued at 20 shillings, which were issued 10 years ago, are still selling at the same value. They are selling at per value. Per value is the 20 shillings that they were selling at. So it means the market price per share is still what? 20 shillings. They are still selling at 20 shillings even today. The debenture has a 10-year maturity period. What does that mean? The, debenture is, uh, the debentures are redeemable. The debentures here, they are redeemable after... 10 years so the 10 years is our n then it is currently selling at 90 shillings so the 90 shillings is the market value per debenture which is represented by what vd that is what the debenture is selling in the market currently then currently the farmer has been paying dividend per share shillings five this is the dividend per share that they have been selling this is the dps or what we call uh, the D notes, the DPS or the D notes. Then the DPS is expected to grow. So there is growth in dividends, which is our our G. They grow in at uh, 5% per annum. Now in future, now the current MPS is 40. So the market price per share, the preference shares are currently, uh, sorry, the, the market price per share, that is for ordinary shares, they are currently selling at 40 shillings. So the MPS is 40. MPS or what we call what? The peanuts. The peanuts. That is what they are selling in the market currently. Then you are required to determine the weighted average cost of capital or work. So let's get into working. We have identified the various uh, uh, components there. <clears throat> we get to working. Solution. We are going to do the solution in various uh, steps. Let's start with step number one. Compute the cost of each capital component. We need to get the cost of uh, equity. We need to get the cost of uh, perpetual preferentials and the cost of debt or the cost of debentures. Let's start with the cost of equity. We say that we have two formulas when you're getting the cost of equity. One formula is when there is no growth in dividends and the other one is when there is growth in dividend. Now in this case, eh, our dividend per share, like we have identified here, that D naught, the dividend that is payable per share is 5 shillings. Then the P naught is 40 and we have a growth rate of 5%. As you can see, these are the items that we have here. So the formula that we are going to use here is the second formula. We are going to use the second formula. Why? Because there is what? There is growth. Because there is growth. Now in this case, you are going to represent them. So our D naught is 5. So we have it there. Then our G, G is a 5% or 0 0.05. Then uh, the P naught, P naught is 40, like we have identified. So you divide that by 40. So when you solve this, then you, you add, you get this. Then you add 0 0.05 to get that. Multiply by 100 to make it a percentage. Costs are normally represented in percentages, so you multiply this by 100 to get 18.13. Therefore, the cost of equity is 18.13. Let's go to the cost of uh, perpetual preference shares. Preference shares uh, are still in, are selling at par value. So we are saying that uh, the PP, which is the market price per share, it is the same as the par value, which is 20 shillings. Then the dividend per preference share Remember the preference shares that were issued here. The dividend payable on preference share is the rate of, at the rate of what? 10%. So the dividend per preference share will be what? 10% of 20, which is 
we have 10% of 20 which is 2 shillings so the dp we divide this by, by what by pp which is 20 to get 0 0.1 multiply by 100 to make it a percentage you have 10 percent so the cost of preference share is 10 percent we go to the last one cost of debt the cost of debt we are told that uh, the debenture has a maturity period of what 10 years so we are going to use the second formula why because we have n we have n in our items so in this particular case eh, our interest here the interest as you can see the debentures that were issued it is 12 percent debenture so the interest is 12 percent on the value of the debenture so it's 12 percent of 100 so 12 percent of 100 you see we're going to have that which is 12 shillings then the maturity period n we are told that the debentures uh, have a maturity period of 10 years then we have uh, maturity value maturity value is the same as the value that at which the debentures were issued at so as you can see the per value is 100 that is the same value that is uh, the maturity value for that particular debenture so we have the maturity value is 100 and the current ma market value vd is 90 and then the tax is 0.3 when you replace that in the formula we have this is going to give you 8.4 then we have 100 minus 90 which is 10 multiplied by 1 over 10 is going to be uh, remember you're multiplying so this is going to be 1 then we have this here which is 190 times a half or divide by 2 which is 95 then this will be 9.5 divided by 95 to give you 0 0.0989 multiplied by 100 you get 9.89 which is approximately 10 percent which is our cost of debts so after getting the various uh, the cost of various capital components we need now to move to step two now step two we need to get or to compute the market value of each capital component and like we said uh, from this uh, we say that the market value is given there by the market price of a security times the number of securities so to get the market value of each and every item market value of equity would be given by the value the mps the market price per share multiplied by the number of ordinary shares so as you can see the market price per share which is the mps currently the ordinary shares are selling at 40 shillings then to know the number of shares you simply take the amount of money that was raised and the value of each share this is what i mean you go back here like now if you look at this they raised 400 million and each share was selling at 10 shillings so how many shares did they sell it is 400 divided by 10 that is what we use to get what the number of shares as you can see it is 400 million divided by 10 which is 40 million shares so to get the market value of equity to be 40 multiplied by by 40 shares you get uh, one uh, 1600 million 1600 million then we go to the next item market value of preferential capital that will be given the market price per preferential multiplied by the number of preferentials and if we saw preferentials are still selling at par value so the mps is still at what 20 shillings then the number of preferentials will be the amount raised which is 100 million divided by the price per preferential which is a 50 million shares again you multiply the two that is 20 multiply by 50 to give you 100 million so we have uh, our e there and we have uh, our p we proceed to calculating our d so the market value of debenture or debt will, give, will be given by the market value of a debt multiplied by the number of debentures so the market value which is vd was 90 then we have the number of ordinary uh, sorry there is an error here this is not supposed to be ordinary shares but this will be the number of debentures number of debentures so the number of debentures here will be uh, 200 divided by 100 which is uh, 2 million uh, debentures this will be 2 million debentures debentures 2 million debentures so the market value of debt therefore will be 90 multiplied by 2 which will give you at 180 million so this will be 
our D. That will be our D. And then we have the total market value. The total market value. So to get the total market value, we take the E plus P plus D. So back here, E is 1600 million. Then we have P, which is 100 million. Then we have D, which is 180 million. When you add the three, you get 1880 million. 1880 million. That is our, our V. That's our V. Now, after getting that, we can now go ahead and uh, compute the weighted average cost of capital. Weighted average cost of capital. And how do we get that? So, to get the weighted average cost of capital, we are going to use the items that we have calculated. Cost of equity is 18.13%. Cost of perpetual preference shares 10%. Then, cost of debt into 1 minus T is 10%. Then, E is 1600, P 100, D 180, and the total which is V is 1880 million. So we are going to replace this into the formula where work is given by KE and the KE is 18.13. So we have that 18.13 into E, E where E is 1600, we have E there 1600 over V, V is 1880 here. So we have E 1600 divided by 1880 plus 10% which is our cost of preference shares. Then we have uh, our P which is 100. Then we have uh, uh, cost of debt into 1 minus T here. This one is represented by 10%. So we have it there, 10% into 180 which is our D divided by 1880. So when you solve that, this one here is going to give you that. Then this one here is going to give you that. Then we have this one here. Solve it out. It's going to give you that. So when you add all that, you're going to get 16.92%. So our weighted average cost of capital will be 16.92%. 16.92%. So that is one method of calculating the weighted average uh, cost of capital. That is uh, using the first method here. That is weighted average cost method. We also have another method that you can use to get uh, the weighted average cost of capital where work is given by the total monetary cost divided by the total market value, which is uh, given as V times 100 of course to make it a percentage where the monetary cost here that you're talking about here is given by the percentage cost of that particular cost uh, the percentage cost of uh, that particular element of cost of capital multiplied by the market value of capital now in this case eh, the monetary cost of equity will be given by the cost of equity which is 18.13 this is the cost of equity here 18.13 multiplied by the value the market value of cost of equity the market value is what we have uh, gotten here as you can see the market value is 1600 million for the market value of equity so when you multiply the two you're going to get 290.08 do the same monitor monetary cost of uh, p that is the preferential share capital it will be the cost of preference shares which is 10 multiply by the market value which is 100 you get that the same way to this and that you get the total that is uh, the total monetary cost will be 318.08 therefore to get your weighted average cost of capital you take the total monetary cost which is uh, 318.08 that is what we have gotten here you divide that by the total market value which is v and v is 1880 so then you multiply that by 100 to get it a percentage, you're going to get 16.92 as the weighted average cost of capital. So with that, you have uh, uh, learned how to get the weighted average cost of capital using the various uh, uh, capital elements or the cost of capital elements. I hope this tutorial was useful. This was virtual wisdom finance and accounting tutorials. And if this video was useful, kindly do me some favor by subscribing to this channel. 
let your subscription count so that next time when you check we'll have more subscription support the good work by subscribing to this channel subscribe click on the bell icon so that you're notified anytime we have new videos like share and comment you can also leave a question in the comment section or leave any comment and it's going to be responded to as soon as possible thank you for your time my name is peter and i was your host in finance and accounting tutorials